So what we're going to do today is we are going to replace my original rev counter cluster, which replaced a 25,000 mile non-rev cluster, which came with this particular car, for another pre-2000 facelifted item in the form of this rather snazzy green affair, which actually goes quite well with the, uh, the dirt there goes quite well with these seats, which are, to be honest with you, not actually correct for this car. So this car, which is a one litre SE from 2000, November 2000 actually, uh, would have originally had a um, different type of seat trim. But for whatever reason, I'm guessing because it was an ex-motability car, and the uh, later trim does seem to have a knack of getting heavily soiled quite easily, um, to the point where it is pretty much junk, I would sort of surmise from that that basically uh, the trim was replaced, or the interior was replaced, uh, when it was sold on second hand back in the early 2000s. Anyway, so basically we've got to remove the binnacle here first. That is held in by one and if we look here, two crosshead screws. So first off, let's get the binnacle off. Camera, focus on there. There you go. So there, there's one. And let's grab off the other binnacle. Now, it's quite unusual to find um, a micro that does have a rev counter. There were only certain versions that had the rev counter cluster. And what you tended to see was around 2002-2003, uh, when they were actually running down stocks in uh, the Sunderland factory, uh, you actually sort of saw quite a few uh, models actually coming out, quite a few sort of standard models like one litres etc coming out with um, a dash cluster. Oh yeah, incidentally it helps if you've got the steering wheel a bit lower. So the cluster itself or the binnacle itself just pulls off like so and you are greeted by the cluster itself which is held in by one, two and three crosshead screws. So yeah, you sort of tended to see a lot of uh, one liter and 1.4 liters um, sort of coming out with uh, the remainder of the um, rev counter clusters that uh, Nissan obviously had in their sort of various stocks and supplies. Uh, some pre-facelift or pre-2000 facelift uh, 1.3 litre inspirations came with this dash. Uh, you also saw um, a number of 1.3 litre GX's coming with this dash as well. It was quite rare to see the dash in a 1 litre. Now this car would have originally come with um, a 3 dial dash so you would have had the speedo and you would have had obviously separate um, fuel level and water temperature gauges. This particular dash actually came out of a um, five door uh, 1.3 litre in that sort of yellow colour. I've forgotten the actual name of the colour, something like in sort of intense yellow. No, not intense yellow. You had the intense blue, which was a metallic, and then you had that very bright yellow colour that you could get uh, certain inspirations in around 1990 eight or so. Anyway, back to the job in hand. The wiring plug here is literally just sort of pressed into the back of the cluster and that pops out like so. Now what you can do is this actually has, if you look at the wiring diagram for this, this actually has a feed for the rev counter as you would expect. So if you don't want to lose your mileage and you don't know anybody um, interesting enough, let's say, uh, 
who can actually sort of clock these things. Um, you can take a feed from here. Uh, I'm not sure which wire it is. It's one of these wires in this loom here. You can actually take a feed off of this to feed a separate rev counter, should you so desire. Because I'm not intending on getting rid of this car at, well, any point ever, really, um, I don't mind having a mileage that doesn't sort of quite show what it should. So let's have a look at the back of the cluster. So I've got this one here, which is the one I had originally. And what I need to do is I need to change over some of these bulbs. So I've got a um, HCVT transmission. And the CVT warning lamp and also the sport lamp um, use one of these bulbs, uh, one of these sockets, which you don't find. In fact, it's this one here, which you don't find populated with a bulb on a cluster that's come from a manual transmission car, which is actually, you know, quite sensible and totally expected. So you'll see that there. You've got the NCVT hole. And just pop the, uh, the bulb in there. Now, if you look at the other side, there is actually no NCVT uh, symbol, so that'll be quite interesting to see if that actually does anything. Uh, can't really see it on this one unless I... Sh actually, hang on. Yeah, there you go. If I shine it in the light there, you can actually see that NCVT um, icon uh, there. But that's obviously because I've just removed the bulb. So, a couple of other things that I will populate on the back of this one is we've also got this seatbelt warning slash fuel low lamp. And we will take the bulb out of this one here and pop that in here. Uh, my vehicle does not have ABS, so that can come out. And what's this one here? That's if you have a European version, which would have the PSA 1.5 litre diesel unit. And obviously that is for panel illumination. Uh, battery indicators. And... Oh, yep, that's for the LCD panel. So we actually have a little spare bulb here, uh, which I will put into back into this cluster, simply because the person getting the cluster after me will probably appreciate having that bulb back in there so they don't have to do too much swapping around. I also have a load of spare bulbs from my original cluster, so it's not like I'm losing out on bulbs or anything. Now what you can do is you can give these areas, which you wouldn't normally get to, a bit of a clean, uh, as you sort of so desire. So let's get the uh, cloth and just give it a little clean there. Obviously this step is purely optional, to be honest with you. So let's get this cluster in. So first off, let's rest it down, tip it up a little bit. Uh, there's only one way this wiring connector can go in and it's the way that I am putting it in now. Ooh, there we go. There you go. And that literally just clips in like that. And uh, it would also appear that I now have 118,805 miles. I don't actually I have a lot less than that, but uh, that'll be interesting next MOT when I um, have to put on the fact that that now has lower mileage than it did at the MOT it's just gone through. Simple replacement of these three screws. In you go. And in you go. Oh, incidentally, that is the flasher unit. So if you ever have problems with um, your indicators, say, for example, 
failing flasher unit, typical symptoms are indicators that no longer flash. So you'll select a direction and then you'll find that the indicator will just stay permanently lit. And it's usually that flash unit that is at fault. Um, I have in the past managed to rejuvenate flash units with a resoldering of all of the uh, various joints, etc. But they're not exactly too expensive new, and uh, you can sort of get hold of them fairly easily, uh, ready for uh, obviously sort of repairs and fit refitting. Um, Incidentally, that whole unit in there is accessible, I think, from the fuse panel here. You might have to pop the fuse box out of the way. But you can get in there and you can replace that. There's a few other relays in there as well. Uh, not 100% certain what they're for. I would guess heated rear window and uh, possibly electric front windows, etc. Right, clusters in place. What we can do before we uh, refit the dash binnacle is make sure that the cluster actually works and to do that obviously we shall put on the ignition which looks good that doesn't sound too good that sound incidentally is the starter motor which uh, I need to do something with at some point and the auxiliary drive belt, alternator drive belt, which uh, I think is actually on there a little bit tight. So let's check the speedo works. Ah, uh, it looks fine. Don't worry about the slight brake noise. That is simply because the car has been sat for a few days and we're in the middle of, um, they call in this storm. Storm Chad, Storm Trent, Storm Caleb, I don't know, Storm Callum probably, that's the one. So yes, we're in the middle of Storm Callum and uh, obviously there's been an awful lot of water floating about. So let's see if I can see any uh, NCVT light, which I probably can't. Oh, it's now lit but it is lit and you cannot see it through this opaque surface. Bless it. You might actually be able to see it at night. But I no longer have an NCVT light that I can visibly see. So uh, not the end of the world because I do have a snazzy green cluster, which I think looks quite fun. Right, let's put the binnacle back on. So binnacle, so you've got a little thing at the top there that goes in there and there. Actually, I'll show you that again from here. So there, you've got the two locating pegs or lugs that go in there. Oh yeah, you got to make sure you just pop it over those. There you go. And you've got your two things here. Your two screws. We'll focus on. Screw number one. Yeah, there you go, screw number one. And go to the other side. 